Hi, and welcome to this simple analysis of Axfood. So what is Axfood? Well, Axfood is a grocery store retailer. It's not the only thing they do. They do, for example, dabble a little bit with transportation or logistics, as some people might call it. And uh, they're also focusing quite highly on discounts. So this uh, provides a good customer segment, especially during more difficult times. And that makes it a little bit more easy to keep having the customer flow towards uh, their own stores. They also do have a lot of focus on the border trade, at least towards the Norwegian border with uh, Agrocash, something probably a lot of the Eastern Norwegians uh, know a little bit about. The question then was, how was 2022 for Axfood? Well, the border trade is back, so that helps them increasing their top line a little bit. Uh, basically, when all the Norwegians are flocking to the border to get cheap smoke and alcohol. Uh, the food retail index, which I think is very interesting because Axfood keeps on beating the food retail index with their current growth in sales and evaluation. Personally, I'm not sold by the growth, but they do keep on beating the index, so they obviously are doing something right. Uh, they are the discount kings. When I was going through DNB's reports, they actually headlight the uh, Axfood as the discount kings. So uh, just a small thing. They actually are doing quite a lot of discounts and it makes it easier for customers to keep going back. Like they know that they will get cheaper prices with companies under Axfood and well, like they keep going back from that, especially during more difficult times where brand names might not matter as much or uh, you just need to save the, all the money that you can. So uh, based on this, Axfood have been doing quite well during this uh, period. The fuel costs though, they have increased and that is noticed on uh, Dagab, which is their logistic company. Like the margin is getting closer to 1%. I'm not too big a fan of that, but of course it's several reasons. Fuel cost is just one of them. Uh, another one is one of their newer acquisitions, Bergendal Food. Other than that though, you have the food costs that have increased and just a quick notification coffee prices have increased with 30 percent plus it's not just small food costs and this of course affects on every step is like axfood need to pay more the customer needs to pay more in general that just means that the customer will most likely buy less and it's more difficult to sell because well you only have a certain amount of money so it matters and then it's like their uh, acquisition Bergindal. it was gotten in 2021 but like it's uh, preparing and actually doing quite well well, and their margin is doing well, like they're expecting it to do better if in combination with uh, the gob a little bit more in the future. Basically, the, the, the routes are not set up yet. I think Bergendal's food look really good. I think that one might be worth taking a look at. So to get into the nitty gritty, the statement, you can see that their revenue have increased a little bit, like 50%. Personally, I don't feel like that is good enough for eight years. Uh, of course, it is better, like I'm taking Q1 to Q3 in 2022, so it will look better in the end. Uh, but still, it's like, it's a little bit disappointing for me, uh, like I've seen a lot better. Um, they have also managed to increase their margin, like notice that this is the EBIT margin. If you remove the interest and taxes, it's even lower. I feel like the margin is very low, especially some of the other companies that I've checked is over 30% margin alone. Uh, of course, this is a different segment. It plays by different rules. I don't like these rules. It's like uh, very little things need to change for, for it to actually uh, hamper it. But for to go away from the negative part of it, they have uh, been able to increase it a lot and their new acquisition is helping with that 6% margin plus and the gob <laughs> like that is messing around at 1.4% if I remember correctly yeah the logistic part is dragging it down and the new acquisition is actually helping it quite a lot and they have almost doubled the result so this is of course a play by increasing the revenue and improving in the margin so they have done a good job here and i hope it will continue here but uh, how much um, we will see it depends a little bit what they do with the, the gob they have managed to increase dividend by quite a lot. It doesn't look like they will be able to increase it too easily though uh, in the future because of their unstable uh, earnings per share. Like you can see a few other years is very close to being the same earning per share as uh, the dividend. It's a lot of stocks in this uh, stock. <laughs> like it sounds odd, I know, but like you can see it's very little growth, very little reaction based on their results. And I, I'm just not a big fan of the earning per share on this stock, to be honest. It's been disappointing. So when it comes to the balance, you can see that they actually have had uh, historically very low interest bearing debt, that they have had very good control of it if you compare it to the total liabilities and uh, debt to equity. Though unfortunately the last few years that have increased, it should be mentioned that in 2021 they did buy up uh, Bergendahl's food. 
which seems to be a good purchase based on the current margins they're having. Though it's just something to notice. And I think the next few years you will be able to see if it is a change of trend or not. Personally, I hope it's not. But there is another big issue here, is the high leases, right? Yeah, they're having a lot more uh, risk in the leases, so they don't own anything anymore, right? Or, well, they don't own as much anymore. And the lease is almost a third of uh, the total liabilities. So this is a high cost for them. This is something that they need to pay all the time, and it's just another way of having high interest bearing debt, basically. I'm not a big fan of it, and personally, I feel it's very scary. Uh, we will go a little bit deeper into it in the cash flow, but it puts more risk into the stock than perhaps it should be. I mean, you can also see that they have a fairly high total amount of liabilities. Of course, this is a retailer. They do buy up a lot of uh, products, and uh, payable accounts and those kind of things will matter, right? You can see uh, in 2014, it was uh, 5,600. Now it's uh, 18,000. And they're doing a lot worse than uh, what they did before when it comes to the debt to equity, which you can see is over doubled. Uh, it should be mentioned that the purchase of Bergendal did certainly not help with that. And uh, it looks like it's on its way down. It's just something to think about. So when it comes to the cash flow, they have managed to double it more or less. You can see from 2000 to 4000 in 2022, and this is just from Q1 to Q3, uh, they have managed to double it. And you can also see in 2020 and 2021, it's over 4,500 with actually a little bit of a downward trend. They have managed to double their dividends. So you as an investor have been able to get a lot of returns from this company if you went in early. Though I'm not so sure if they will be able to double it as they have been historically, because it looks to be a little bit more struggles forward for Axfood. They have been increasing their investments. So for example, their purchase in 2021 with the Baringdal food, but also you can see that the historical investment was, around, was below 1000 and that threshold is now broken. They have become a bigger company and they're now over a thousand on average. It will take more space forward, just maintenance, those kind of things, right? And then what I believe will be the biggest issue for Axfood is the leases. And you can see like the leases came in 2019, right? And that's where it started taking a big chunk of space. And look here, the finance cost is doubled, except for in 2021, where they actually took up debt. So this is uh, borrowing here. They're paying down or using interest bearing debt. So basically it looks a little bit scary, right? It's like when their finances, their um, liabilities is now over 1,500. And that is just total change in uh, their earlier strategy. And it's it looks to be increasing in 2022 as well. So if you compare this to Q1 to Q3 in 2021, it was below 1,500. So it's very noticeable. Of course, it might be that they're just focusing to pay down a little bit on their debt as it looks like, but still in the leases, they are increasing. They are taking more space and they need to have a cash flow to cover it. So if they pay almost 2000 in dividend almost 2000 in investment that is the entire cash flow where's the money for the leases coming to so they need to improve their cash flow or they're going to struggle uh, so that is one of the things i'm the most worried about when it comes to Axfood. So how is actually Axfood compared to somewhat similar competitors uh, on the stock exchange in the Nordics? Axfood is not really doing that great if you compare them to Europeans. Their margin is a lot lower, their debt to equity is a lot low is lower, their current asset to current liability is lower. So one is good, over one is good, very good. Uh, under one means that they might struggle with a little bit of liabilities, that they have more like current liabilities than current assets, so not a good thing. Uh, might mean that they can struggle a little bit with their uh, liquidity. Dividend is a lot lower and X Foods price is higher. So based on that, I don't think it looks too good, but it indicates that it's uh, more faith in growth in X Food than for example, Agropris. Personally, I don't really see too much growth there, but that is something else. And then you can add in Took Money, which is a Finnish company. Uh, their margin is slightly higher. Their debt to equity and current asset, current liabilities, and is unfortunately not up to date uh, since I didn't find it in their Q3 reports. But they also look better than on Xfood. Uh, their dividend is a lot higher, and their price to earning is 10.2. So honestly, I don't really feel like Xfood gets so good out of this. Of course, Autopris is a discount retailer. They don't really do food in the same way. 
so um, it's it's a lot of money going back to um, making sure things are cold warm food but like these kind of items right why axe food versus other competitors it's obviously expected a lot of growth have they been able to do that well honestly i don't feel like they have been able to do that when they're less than doubling of their revenue so what is the downsides of Xfood? I would say that Dugob is one of the main downsides. Uh, one of the main reasons is it drags down their margin. Dugob have a current margin of 1.5% and it's actually a big chunk of their revenue. So it matters. If they're able to change the margin, if they're able to improve that, I would say that it's a big benefit. It also gives them a lot of data on transportation, like these kind of things. So in that way, it is a benefit. But right now, 5th of February, sanctions on some of Russia's petroleum is going to start. And this might create an increased cost on fuel again, which Dugob is already struggling with their margins. So probably will not look too good yeah right now i feel like that is a very big downside they do have in general low margins like they are in a segment where it's expected to have low margins but like they, they don't even have uh, among the better margins in the segment they are so they do have low margins i don't like it i don't like where they're going and i i would want more from x food to be honest so for now i will put this as a big downside if they were at six percent plus on margins in general like their new acquisition it is six percent plus then it would be better and then it's uh okay margins in the segment they're doing they have a low realized growth they have not improved their growth like their revenue with over a hundred percent and they have increased their liabilities a lot so i would say that based on the amount of money they're putting in like the amount of uh, effort they're putting in they're doing a bad job they have also a low increase in eps which for me puts in a little bit of a warning bell eps should follow if not improve more than result. If not, it indicates uh, watering out of shares, those kind of things. So it's it's just something to consider. And if they're watering out their shares in some ways, it should still follow the results. It shouldn't be falling behind, at least not as much as uh, what Axfus is. And when it comes to the low increase of in EPS, honestly, it just indicates that it's so many shares that this is creating an issue to improve their earning per share. I would need to see a higher increase in earning per share for me to well feel good about it so what are the benefits of hex food well improve their margin in retail they have been able to keep on improving their margin in retail and often you can see it over six percent and the fact that the um, border is opening more and more uh, means that they're able to improve their margin even more with the arrow crash Villis is one of their sub companies there and they have now been uh, counted as the number one recommended food retailer in Sweden from a survey commissioned by Axfood though. And Snubgross, which isn't doing that much food, at least not in the same way, is currently growing quite a lot and their margin there is at 6.8. It is expected to get better margin. Uh, they're currently working on their automation. Uh, this is something that you could have seen in Autopiece as well, if you watched it before. And automation is very important for margins. It means less workers. Workers are some of the most expensive things for a company. Uh, the focus on automation might help their margin, and it's expected. Like, the automation is getting ready more or less in 2025. So, yeah, uh, this might be a very good thing. And Axfood is still in the defensive segment. People will always need food. They should be able to get cash flow and money in. So if you're scared of the current market, Axfood might actually be a place to be just because, well, you need food, everyone needs food, and Axfood is one of the discounters for food. Based on that, it is a lot of safety in it. Other than that, I have something for uh, you to think about. This is the price food inflation year over year by category yeah things are getting more expensive and uh, this will impact the amount of products people can buy will axfood be able to push the prices up as much or will that make people go away from certain products or just use less of it it's uh, an interesting thought and we will be able to see that for going forward so for the disclaimer this is not financial advice for anyone to buy or sell axfood though i do really hope that it helps you get a little bit more familiar with what axfood is and what it's a little bit about perhaps some of the weaknesses some of the strengths uh, other than that thanks again for all the good comments all the likes and uh, do you have any wishes for what i should add into these kind of things or perhaps some specific companies i should go through so other than that cheers <laughs>